The lesson outcome for this video is, I can factor quadratic expressions, and this is a continuation of the previous lesson. Now you probably remember this type of example in the previous lesson. It's a quadratic expression where a is 1, so this number in front of x squared is our a value, and when there is no value there, it's a 1. Our b value is this number right here in front of x, and then our c value is the number off to the right over here. And we're going to take that c value, and we're going to put that in this rectangle off to the side. And then we're going to go ahead and list all the factors we know of 20. Positive 20. So 1 times 20 is 20, and 2 times 10 is 20. 3, 20 is not divisible by 3, but it is divisible by 4, and it's 4 times 5. This is all of the factors of 21. I'm sorry, of 20. So now I'm going to add them. If you remember, we talked about adding them next, and getting the sum, so 21, and that's 12, and that's 9. Well, here's the problem. We talked about this again in the previous lesson. None of these is the middle value we need, which is negative 9. We need a negative 9. So what we do is we go to that 9 right there, and we say, okay, I need to make that negative. If I need this to be negative, that means I change both the 4 and the 5 to negatives, because negative times a negative will still be positive for this c value. So 4 times 5 is 20, and it's negative 4 and negative 5, which is still positive 20. So here are our two factors, negative 4 and negative 5, that we need to get that middle value of negative 9. So now we go ahead and we write our two sets of parentheses, and we say that the first term in each binomial is x, because x times x gives us x squared. And then we're going to go ahead and put our minus 4 and our minus 5 into the parentheses. And we've now factored this into two binomial factors that multiply to give us this. Now, what we're going to do that's different in this lesson versus the previous lesson is what if this c term is instead of being positive, what if it's negative? Things are a little different there. Let's try some examples. Okay, so here's an example where we still have our a value as 1, our b value is negative 2, and our c value is negative 48. So notice, this is important, negative 48, not just positive 48, but negative 48 is the term I'm going to put in my box or rectangle off to the right. Now I'm going to uh, list all the factors of 48 or excuse me, I'm going to list all the factors of negative 48. Well, 1 times 48 is 48, but we need it to be negative. Now, we could put the negative here or here, but we only can have one negative to get negative 48 when we multiply them. The process I use is I always make the first value negative as I start the problem, and then later if I need to change it to the other value to be negative, I will do so. More on that as we go. So 2 times 24 is 48, and I'm going to make the front one negative. 48 is also divisible by 3. It's 3 times 16, and I'm going to make that negative. Then we have 4 times 12, and I'm going to list the first one as negative. It's not divisible by 5, but it is divisible by 6. 6 times 8 is 48, and one of them needs to be negative. Now, just like the other process we've done, we're going to add them, so we get 47. Now, here's the thing. Now that we're adding them, if one of them is negative and the other one's positive, when we add them, we actually subtract the two values and we keep the sign of the one that's larger. So when I do negative 1 plus 48, I get 47. It's positive right now because my negative is over here. All right, negative 2 and 24, when we add them, we get 22. Again, because technically, you're subtracting the two values, 24 minus 2 is 22, and keeping the sign of the larger number. Negative 3 plus 16 is 13. Negative 4 plus 12 is 8. And negative 6 plus 8 is 2. Now, once again, we're looking for which of these values matches our b value in the middle, which is negative 2. Well, just like the previous example in this lesson, this is a 2, but it's not negative, and we need it to be negative. So how can we make it negative? Well, similarly, we have to change this to a negative 
by changing this sign to positive, so it was negative and now it's positive, and we have to change the 8 to a negative. So notice if we add these now, we have a positive 6 plus a negative 8, we get negative 2, which is what we needed. Again, you don't change both of them to negative because then we would get a positive 48. So we have found our factors that work, positive 6 and negative 8. Go back and set our two sets of parentheses up. x times x will give us the x squared in the front. A positive 6 and a negative 8 will work out. And again, if we FOIL this, we'd get x squared, which is this. Then we'd get negative 8x and a positive 6x when we do the O and the I, which will give me negative 2x. And then we multiply these two and we get negative 48. Let's try one more. Again, here's our A value. A is 1. We have our B value. Our B value is positive 3. Our C value is negative 28. We're going to bring that negative 28 over here. We're going to list all of the factors of negative 28. 1 times 28, but we know that one of them needs to be negative to get the negative 28. 2 times 14 is 28, but we need one of them to be negative to be negative 28. It's not divisible by 3, but it is divisible by 4. It's 4 times 7. One of them has to be negative. We're going to go through our addition now. Negative 1 plus 28 is 27. Negative 2 plus 14 is 12. And negative 4 plus 7 is 3. Notice this 3 right here is the number we need to match our B value up here. So we know these are the correct factors. We put our parentheses down. We don't need to change them this time like we did last time because we do want positive 3. We didn't want a negative 3. If this was a negative 3 here, we would need to swap the sign. This one would be positive and this one would be negative. x times x gives us our x squared minus 4 and plus 7.